today is gonna be one of my favorite kind of videos to make. It's just really realistic. Some of our favorite weeknight dinners right now, they're super rustic and easy to make with minimal ingredients, which is my favorite. So I have a lot of like whole food things like carrots and parsnips and potatoes and chicken. And we're just gonna make a few wholesome rustic meals that are easy to put together on the weeknight. Throw in the crock pot or in the instant pot and it just makes life so easy when you can kind of just get ahead and keep some good meals in rotation for your family, especially. So welcome back to my kitchen and let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys today what I'm making. So this morning I'm actually gonna kind of get ahead. So it's early in the day still, but I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner simmering on the stove. I love doing that because then it's just like, once you get towards the end of the day and it's starting to get really dark outside because it's full. And so I love to just go ahead and have my dinner simmering on the stove and I don't have to worry about it later. I love recipes that are good for that. And this is one. So today I'm gonna make a rustic chicken stew. I love this. It's got that like slow roasted chicken where if I put my chicken, like a whole chicken in my oven and cook it for two hours, it has that really tender, like slow roasted flavor. And this has the same sort of flavor, but you do it in the pot on the stove and it's super quick but it feels like you simmered it all day long. It has like really good flavor and texture and it's super hearty and comforting, but completely wholesome. So I love this kind of thing, especially in the fall and winter. And I'm gonna have all these recipes that I'm making this week on my website. You can go to healthyelizabeth.com and all these recipes will be there. You can also sign up for my email list, which I always have linked down below. And each week, like when I put out my new video, I go ahead and I send out those recipes to you guys. So you can sign up there and get the recipes and I hope you guys try them. Let me know if you do. So if you guys if you guys have been here for a little while, you guys know that I love to make my own homemade stocks. I like to make chicken broth, vegetable broth, and even like beef broth, and I need to do a video on that. I actually did not get ahead this week, so I picked up some Kettle and Fire bone, or not bone broth, this is actually just chicken broth. If you like the flavor of bone broth, use that, it has great nutrients in it, but I actually like the flavor of chicken broth better, and so do my kids. So I have four little kids, and they definitely don't prefer the taste of bone broth. They like just regular chicken broth. So that's fine with me. I'm gonna add plenty of nutrients to this soup so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna use some of that. I also have a little bag of potatoes. These are like the little mini potatoes. So I like to pick up some of those organic because there's lots of pesticides that are sprayed on potatoes. So make sure that's one of the things you need to buy organic if you can. And if you can't find the little mini potatoes, you could get like a bag of, um, regular yellow potatoes or even red potatoes, but the mini ones just make it so much easier because you can just slice them in half one time and they're like the perfect little bite-sized piece to put in the stew. And then I also have some carrots. I always use rainbow carrots just because I think they're pretty. So I have just some regular carrots here and then one little like golden carrot. Here's another one. And then I also have a parsnip. Now, if you've never had parsnips, try it. It's really good. It's just another kind of root vegetable. It's kind of sweet like a carrot and I like it. It melts into the soup almost the same as the potatoes. So like my kids don't even know it's in there. So I love adding this just for something different, some different nutrients. So I do a mixture of the carrots and the parsnips, but if you don't have parsnips or you just have carrots in the house or you can't find a parsnip at the store, just substitute it for all carrots. And you could also do more carrots and less potato. You could kind of play around with it. If you want to do a little bit low carb, you could pull back on the potatoes, add some more carrots to this. I'm also going to use some chicken. So let me grab that. So whenever I'm not getting meat from my farmer's market or one of my local farmers, which I do a lot, I like to stock up my freezer. I like to grab this. This is from Sprouts. I find them there. It's called Pasture Bird and it's just pasture raised, it's non-GMO, regenerative, so really good quality chicken. And I'm gonna be using chicken thighs. So that's kind of like a really easy way to get that slow roasted chicken flavor because it's got all the fats in it, which we want anyways, because that keeps us full. I actually feel like I only rarely use chicken breasts and like the leaner cuts of beef and um, chicken because I prefer the fats in it. I think the fats are really good for you when you buy good quality and so I'll opt for things like chicken thighs or whole chickens over chicken breasts and it's actually cheaper, more economical to do that. So if you're trying to be on a budget but eat really healthy, do not be afraid of fats. Just go for healthy, good quality meats but go for the fattier cuts and you'll actually be able to cut back on your grocery bill. So these are most of the ingredients that we're gonna need to get started with. So I have my celery and my potatoes, garlic, onion, 
chicken broth, carrots and parsnips. So it's really simple. And then I also have just my chicken thighs right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash up these vegetables. Instead of a colander, I like to use one of these little like, I don't know what they are, like little European drain racks that you just place over the sink. They're really cool. And so I just put it over my sink and then I can take all my stuff and I just set it on top as long as it's nice and organic. If it's conventional, I'll soak it in some apple cider vinegar and water in the sink just to really clean it off. But most of the stuff I buy is usually organic or from my own garden or the farmer's market. So I'm just taking these vegetables today and I just put them on this drain rack like this. And then at once I can just hose everything down. I think it's really cool. So this leftover celery that's been in my fridge for a little while is kind of looking sad now. So instead of throwing it away, I'm going to put this back in my fridge in a little Tupperware or something with a lid or a jar. And I'll use this later in the week to make homemade vegetable broth that I'm going to keep in the fridge and use for next week's stuff. After you cube up your chicken, you're gonna wanna coat it in a little bit of flour. So I just like to do about two tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna go ahead and use some einkorn flour. So einkorn flour is an ancient wheat flour that's higher in protein and lower in gluten. So a lot of people that are gluten-free can actually tolerate einkorn flour. I know, cause I've had a gluten intolerance in the past and I was still able to eat some einkorn flour, especially if it was fermented. But since today I'm just gonna saute this quickly on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And I can link it down below if you're interested in trying it. It's really good. It even makes good baked goods and everything. So I'm gonna use this. It's easier to digest and it just hasn't been altered like typical American flour. So, and we're just gonna coat the chicken in the flour. That way when we put it on the stove in the pot, we can brown it a little bit. And then later the flour that's on that is gonna help thicken our stew. So we naturally have like a chickeny, almost like chicken and dumplings. The chicken broth is gonna be thickened by some of this flour. So if you can't do flour and you haven't, if you've tried einkorn and you can't do that either, then you could substitute it probably with like either cornstarch or arrowroot powder is probably what I would try. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple tablespoons of this. So now that my chicken's all coated in the flour, I'm gonna go ahead and get my big pot on the stove nice and hot and I'm gonna add some oil to it. And I like to do avocado oil for this, get that nice and browned on all the sides. You don't wanna crowd the pan, but since we're only using one package of chicken, as long as your pot's big enough, it should be okay. And a lot of you keep asking me why I like to cook with avocado oil so often. And actually I prefer olive oil. That's my favorite kind of oil. I think it's the healthiest. But when I'm cooking with it, either on the stove and I'm really browning something over high heat or I'm putting it in the oven or air fryer, then I like to use avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point. So that just means that it's not gonna kind of activate the unhealthy things and start to oxidize it. Gonna keep it at a temperature to where it stays healthy, if that makes sense. So I like to use olive oil when I'm just sauteing some veggies like green beans or zucchini on the stove really quickly and just kind of getting it cooked a little bit. Or if I'm drizzling it on salads or in salad dressings, I I like to keep my olive oil a little bit more on the raw side. That way all those nutrients stay intact because its smoke point is not very high. Although a lot of people say different things about this. So everything with a grain of salt, but that is my personal opinion on it. And so I just stick with avocado oil when I'm cooking over high heat and then olive oil when I'm cooking over less heat or raw. And then I also like to cook with a lot of butter and you could cook with ghee or tallow. There's so many different fats that you could use to cook with, but my favorites are avocado oil, olive oil, I actually try and get some really good olive oil. This one is off Amazon, but it's from Sicily. It's a cold press, unfiltered, organic, early harvest. I mean, it, it has every label in the book on here that's just really good quality. And so I like to get fresh pressed olive oil as best quality as I can find. And I use it sparingly. I don't go overboard. And so I'll use the avocado oil that's a little bit cheaper whenever I'm cooking on the stove or something like that. But then when I need a really good oil to either drizzle or like I said, just saute quickly, then I will use a little bit of olive oil. And since I know you guys always like to see what kind of pans I'm using when I cook a dish, today I thought I'd show you 
So this is one of my absolute favorite pots. So this is a Staub pot. They're made in France. They're cast iron enamel, which is amazing. And they're super heavy in a good way. So this is actually the only pot that I can get water to boil on my stove in no time. Just the way it holds heat is really high quality. And it's loud. I love how sturdy it is and it's also just beautiful sitting on your stove so it's like part of my kitchen decor without even meaning to be but I love these I can try and link this one down below it is just an amazing pot I love good quality I don't like to have tons of things in my kitchen I just like to have the right things and so this is one of my favorite pots anytime I'm making rice or pasta or oatmeal I don't even know anything I make it in this pot this is my absolute favorite pot and so today I'm gonna boil our chicken stew in here if you have tried cast iron a lot and you've had bad luck with that I would say try one of these and they have really good skillets too I have the matching stop skillet that goes with this and it's incredible but actually the cast iron skillet or type of cast iron that I like this one right here which this is a griddle but this is by Smithy it's local to me here in the US and I think their cast iron is above everybody else's so if you're looking for good quality cast iron this is their griddle they also have a bunch of um, cast iron pans and carbon steel pans which I'm looking to add to my collection I just absolutely love that and their company is really great so if you're looking for good pots and pans those will be linked down in the description So really the most challenging part of this recipe is just chopping up your veggies. So I like to start with chopping up my onion, I'll dice that, and then I'll take the ends off of my carrots and parsnips, and I won't peel them, I'll leave the skin intact on, because we want all of those nutrient benefits that are in the skin, so just leave that on. If you really don't like the texture, you can peel it, but I'm telling you, you won't even notice it. So then I just thinly slice my parsnips and my carrots, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the celery. And when you're chopping big, hearty root vegetables like this, make sure you have a really big, sharp knife. That really makes it a lot easier and I know it looks like a lot of prep to have to chop all these vegetables at dinner time but I actually find it kind of therapeutic I'll just have music on or I'll be looking outside at the leaves and chopping my vegetables while I do it and it's actually really relaxing it becomes a habit that's for sure This is the kind of meal I get so excited about. So instead of noodles or something, we have all these vegetables, not even to mention, we have more potatoes over here to make it even more hearty and filling. This is really gonna fill up the whole family and it's gonna feed us a ton of times and it's so affordable. This makes a huge pot of soup, so I love it. So many veggies, so many nutrients in here for you and it tastes so great. So now I've got my pot on the stove, it's gonna heat up and then I'm gonna get this chicken searing. And this is one of those meals that is incredibly easy to make once you get everything going, because you just throw it in the pot and really just let it cook. But what I would say is if you're trying to make this on a weeknight, what you could do, say you wanna make it on a Monday night, I would, on a Sunday afternoon or something, I would go in here and I would chop up all these vegetables, except the potatoes, because those will start to brown a little bit and oxidize. I would take all these vegetables, chop them up and put them in a big mixing bowl with a lid or saran wrap or beeswax over it and put that in the fridge. So then if you go to make this Monday night, all you need to do is get the chicken browned or you can just like throw in the whole chicken and later just shred it up if you don't want to cut it into the strips or the little chunks. You could throw that in your pan, get that all browned up, and then just take out your big tub of vegetables and throw those in. So I like to cook with a lot of vegetables. I really like to make things that are veggie forward. Even if it has meat, I try to scale back on the meat a little bit and then really add veggies in for all the fiber and the nutrients. And I love to add lots of fat. And so if you can go ahead and get these veggies prepared, it just makes everything a lot faster. 
So I've had my big Dutch oven preheating over medium high heat and I'm just gonna drizzle in a couple tablespoons of my avocado oil and then I'm gonna add in that chicken that we have the flour coating on and I just kind of spread it out the best I can. I'm definitely not a stickler about this kind of thing but as long as it's nice and brown and has some golden bits on it, it's good to go, we're gonna like it. So I'll let that cook for a little while and I'll gather up the rest of my vegetables. Because I use so many vegetables when I cook, I like to put it in a bowl that way I don't spill it all over my kitchen floor because usually you'll walk into my kitchen and there will be scraps of vegetables just everywhere. So recently I started putting it in a bowl now and my floors are a lot cleaner, so that's great. And then next I'm just gonna take my potatoes here and just slice them in half. Most of them are pretty small, so slicing them in half is fine, but if they are bigger, I'll go ahead and quarter them. So once your chicken has nicely browned and there's lots of golden bits stuck to the bottom of the pan, you want that because we're going to scrape that up with the liquid. I'm going to go ahead and add in all those vegetables except for the garlic and I'm just going to toss those in, get them nice and translucent and then once that's done, I'm going to add in my garlic, I'm going to add in the chicken and we're going to season it really well with salt and pepper. You got to do plenty of salt and pepper in soups to really flavor the broth. And next you're going to take another two tablespoons of that einkorn flour or just regular all-purpose flour and we're going to toss all those vegetables and you can also add a little bit more oil or butter here if you don't have enough in the bottom of your pan to kind of help you make that roux that's going to help thicken your stew. So cook that off for a few minutes to get that flour taste out and then we're going to add in the, our potatoes. So once you let that soup simmer nice and slow on the stove, it doesn't take very long. You just wanna make sure that those vegetables are all really tender. And the broth here is already so good and rich, you could leave it just like that, but I like to play around with it. And today I wanted a creamier soup, so I'm just adding in a cup of either half and half or heavy cream will work. And then if you're dairy free, you could also substitute that. But this is just a delicious soup. It's so hearty and perfect for fall and winter. And I also have a little bit of parsley growing outside. So I just took some out off of my little plant here and chopped that up and just added a little bit of fresh greenery to this meal. And it was so great. I love this soup and I'm definitely gonna be making this almost every week now because we really enjoyed it. I let the chicken stew simmer for a while and now we're gonna go ahead and eat it and it's nice and creamy so right at the end I like to go ahead and add in a little bit of either half and half or heavy cream but if you wanted to make this recipe entirely dairy free you could cut out the butter and just do the oil and then at the end you could finish it with a little bit of coconut cream or coconut milk I went ahead and do, did regular dairy today and it's amazing I think you guys are really gonna like it so good Okay, so today I'm gonna make a cabbage and beef soup and I'm gonna make it in the Instant Pot. So you could do this one in the Instant Pot or in the Crock Pot, but I'm gonna do it in the Instant Pot because I like to brown the ground beef before. So I go ahead and get that in the Instant Pot first and then I add all my veggies in and make the soup. So it's just really easy to keep it all in one and you can let it just stay on warm mode or on slow cook all day. So it's really great for in the fall time because you can just leave it in there and don't even have to worry about it. So I'm gonna make that. It's one of the easiest like rustic soups that I make in my home it's super inexpensive and simple ingredients and I love it because I always have ground beef in my freezer cabbage is really filling and it's really good for you because it's a cruciferous vegetable so all around I love this meal and I like to serve it with a little bit of sour cream on top almost like a cabbage roll which we absolutely love those so this is kind of like an easy version of that it reminds me almost of like a stuffed pepper soup or something but no brown rice nothing like that it's really easy to make so I'm gonna make that tonight in my instant pot and right now I'm gonna go out to my garden real quick and pick a couple green bell peppers that I'm gonna put in the soup. Hi, 
Okay, so I just grabbed my bell peppers from the garden and I'm gonna use two. You can just use one, but since these were from my garden, they're a little on the small side. So I'm gonna go ahead and use both of them today. Along with my two green bell peppers, I'm also gonna use a cabbage. This is one I got from the farmer's market. So it's a nice petite sized cabbage, but if you have a really big cabbage, just like take maybe like a quarter of it off because it doesn't need to be that big necessarily to go with one pound of ground beef. And then I have one pound of grass fed organic ground beef. This isn't super lean or anything. I like the fat in there. And then I've got a can of petite fire roasted diced tomatoes. If you can get fire roasted, those make such a difference in recipes. I think they're so flavorful. So I always like to opt for the fire roasted. And then I didn't get a chance to make beef broth for this recipe again. I told you guys I was behind this week. So I'm just using regular old organic beef broth in a carton. And then we're also gonna use some garlic, which I've got over here, an onion, and some seasonings. It's really, really simple. I'm also gonna use a little bit of crushed tomatoes, which I have some left over in the fridge. I have some left over in the fridge from when I made some meals this past week. So I bought like the big can of crushed tomatoes and then I used some of it and put the rest in a jar. So I have that on hand. And yeah, so let me go ahead and show you how to put together this really easy instant pot soup. your recipe I kind of like to start with chopping my veggies first that way I can kind of get that out of the way and move on with the other steps so I don't have to worry about something burning or whatever trying to chop a vegetable so we're going to chop up the bell peppers I'm going to chop up my cabbage and then I'm going to rinse it in a colander just to make sure that's nice and clean and then I've got one yellow onion I'm going to dice up and you've got to have garlic I always put a lot of garlic in my recipes so if you like to cut back on garlic go ahead but I say the more the merrier and it's really good for you so I'm gonna use usually about four cloves, sometimes six, sometimes more, it just kind of depends. But today I'll probably do, it depends on the size. Today I'll probably do around four or five. These look pretty small. I actually just got some of my seed garlic in the mail, so I'm gonna be growing my own garlic for next year, which I'm super excited about, I've never done before. But for now we're using this garlic, and these cloves are so tiny. Whoop. These cloves are really tiny. So I'm gonna use a bunch of those, but It'll probably come out to about a tablespoon of minced garlic. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this all up. I'm gonna start with my green bell peppers and I just kind of like to run my knife down the side. That way the seeds stay intact in the middle and I don't have to like cut them out of each little strip of bell peppers. So if you just take your knife and run it around the edges like that, then you end up with like this, oh, I missed one spot. Then you end up with this nice core of seeds and you don't have to worry about them going all over your cutting board for the most part. <laughs> There's always a few stragglers. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a bell pepper with a leaf still on it. I love it. Gotta love homegrown. Ducks so far, it's making a well. No, they poured water in. So we're gonna go ahead and dice up a sweet onion and along with my two green bell peppers. And then we're gonna also cube and core our cabbage. So for the cabbage, I like to start by just cutting the end off. So that's the base of it, the really stocky part. And then I'll turn it on its bottom after I peel all of the leaves off and I'll cut around the core. So I'll make about four slices just around the core, almost like you would core an apple. And then I also like to take a little bit off of the bottom of the core because that part is not quite as fibrous as like the really stocky part. So I like to get every little bit I can so there's no waste and then I'll just cut these into probably like one inch chunks is good. So normally if I'm trying to get ahead on some of my vegetable prep for the week, I'll take a bowl like this that has one of these little lids. I'll link it down below. I love these. I have like a set of six of them and they're so useful. So I'll get 
some of these bowls and I'll just take some of my like bell peppers and onions here and I'll put them in the bowl and keep them in the fridge. So when I go to make a meal like this, I literally just dump it in the pot and it makes it so fast. So I'll sneak it into, I was telling my husband today, I like to cook ahead of time. Like I don't want to go to a meal time and have to cook right then and there all the time. I prefer to have things kind of made and in the fridge, like it's a hot bar or a cold bar. That way we can just pull stuff out when we're ready and it's not stressful. So that's a really great way to eat healthy. If you feel like you have a ton of cooking to do all the time, you can just do a little bit at a time at your own pace and it doesn't even matter what time of day it is. You can just cook when you have the time to cook. You guys have probably noticed that most of the time I leave my garlic separate from the rest of my vegetables that I have going and that's because garlic tends to burn really easily so I have all the other veggies I like to saute first and get softened or whatever I'm trying to do that day but then I'll leave my garlic separate that way I could have my garlic right at the end and it doesn't get burnt and bitter so that's a little tip if you're not used to cooking with fresh garlic I know a lot of people like to cook with garlic powder and stuff like that but definitely try fresh garlic because of all of the health benefits of it it's really potent and powerful especially this time of year when it's the fall and winter. Garlic is a great way to boost your immune system. So I like to add lots of fresh garlic, but I just add it right at the end. So once I added everything into the Instant Pot, including the broth, I added a whole carton of the broth. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this all together. And sometimes I'll leave it for just a minute or two so the cabbage will start to wilt a little bit so I can really stir it together because it's so full. And so once I stir it all together, once I stir it all together, I'll put the lid on and I'll pressure cook it on high for 30 minutes, or I will just put it on slow cook and let it cook low and slow for maybe like six hours, just on low. And when it's done, the broth will be so rich and the cabbage will be soft and tender and just delicious. And since this soup reminds us of cabbage rolls, we like to serve it with a little bit of sour cream, just like we'd normally do with our cabbage rolls. So don't forget, you can get the recipes down below. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you start from the beginning and check out my Healthy Elizabeth playlist.